At the heart of the historic centre of Bruges lies the Bikorov, or Beehive Library. It is a public library popular with both young and old. But it is also an official Flemish heritage library, holding a vast collection of medieval books, incunabula, old prints, and manuscripts by the 19th century Flemish poet Giro Gezella. Amongst its most treasured historic books, the library holds a collection of 21 late medieval books of ours. These small books stand out both because of their content and decoration. The texts are often illuminated with bright and alluring initials, miniatures and borders. Expensive materials such as gold leaf, ultramarine and the finest vellum appeal to the eye. These 21 books of ours were made in Bruges, Ghent, France and Holland. They contain texts in Dutch or Flemish, Latin and French. A large part of this collection was bestowed upon the city of Bruges by two 19th century collectors, West Flemish nobleman Thomas de Schitterer de Lopum and Eno based bibliophile Edouard Utard. The luxurious books of ours were extremely in vogue with well to do medieval men and women. They ordered books tailored to their specific wishes at the workshops of the best scribes, miniaturists, and bookbinders. In the late Middle Ages, International trade in luxury products thrived in Bruges. By the end of the 14th century, Bruges had become, along with Paris, one of the most important cities for the production of illuminated books of hours in Western Europe. On account of the high production costs, books of hours conveyed prestige upon their owners. Consequently, wealthy burghers, aristocrats and royals loved having their portrait painted with their book. There was a strong interaction between the art of book illumination on the one side and of panel painting on the other. Flemish primitive Jan van Eyck, for instance, also illuminated books. Due to the religious content of books of ours, their presence in paintings also symbolized piety and devotion. But what is the content of books of ours? What is their purpose? Books of ours are prayer books for lay people. They originate from the breviary, the prayer book for the clergy. As is still the case nowadays, medieval priests, monks and nuns practice religion to the rhythm of the clock. In addition to the Holy Mass, each day had eight fixed moments for prayer. These were the eight canonical hours. The day started at midnight with matins or vigils. Lords followed at three in the morning. At six, prime. At nine, terse. At noon, sext. At three in the afternoon, nones. At six or around dusk, vespers. And at around nine or before retiring, compline. On these set moments, the clergy read and sang psalms, prayers, hymns, and parts of the Bible. The content of the texts and songs depended on the canonical hour, on the time of the year, and on the liturgical calendar. In the breviary, texts and songs were arranged according to the liturgical calendar and canonical hours. The breviary was a very complicated book, which required a sound understanding of liturgy. For this reason, it was unsuited for lay people. For their use, a simpler version of the breviary was developed in the 12th century. This was the Book of Hours. It contained less variation, shorter texts, and a selection of only the most comprehensible and appealing psalms and prayers. Most books of ours were more lavishly decorated than breviaries, but there were also more sober and cheaper versions on the market for less affluent readers. Books of ours allowed readers to pray at their own initiative. They could use their book at church, even during mass, or at home, while sitting in front of a painting of a saint or near a crucifix, reading out loud or in silence, in groups or alone. Saint Michiel, bid for us. Saint Gabriel, bid for us. Saint Raphael, bid for us. Saint Peter, bid for us. Saint Andries, bid for us. Most books of ours start off with a calendar of the liturgical feasts. By means of this calendar, 
the reader knew for what occasion or to what saint to pray that day. On the 14th of February, for instance, we can find St. Valentine in these calendars. A group of saints appears in every calendar, but the rest of them vary according to the wishes of the commissioner of the book and to the context. Books of ours made for use in Bruges, for instance, usually contain the name of the local patron saint, Donatian, in the month of October. Consequently, a study of the saints who are recorded in a given calendar and in the prayers can offer information about the provenance of the book. The calendar is usually followed by a selection of cycles of hours. The most popular cycle was the Hours of the Virgin, which appears in almost every book of hours. The cycle contains psalms, prayers, hymns and Bible readings, which are particularly suited for the veneration of Mary. They are spread out over the eight canonical hours of the day. That way, the reader can complete the Hours of the Virgin in the course of one day. The first hour, or matins, of the Virgin cycle is usually accompanied by a miniature, which shows the Annunciation. This is the moment when the angel Gabriel announces to Mary that she would conceive and become the mother of Jesus. Usually, each of the following hours is accompanied by a miniature showing another episode in the life of Mary. Miniatures in books of hours serve different purposes. They obviously embellish the text and they announce the beginning of a new chapter in the book. Besides this, they also serve a meditative purpose. By looking at the depicted scenes, the reader, even the less literate ones, becomes emotionally involved in the sufferings of Mary and the other biblical figures. This emotional involvement puts the reader in the focused and serene mindset that is needed for sincere devotion. The Hours of the Virgin are at the heart of most books of hours. They are generally complemented with a selection of cycles on other biblical themes. Each cycle of hours has its own program of illumination. The Hours of the Passion, for instance, are enriched by miniatures which show the mortal suffering of Christ, such as the crowning with thorns. Other cycles of hours include the Hours of the Holy Spirit, the Hours of the Holy Cross, and the Hours of the Eternal Wisdom. An extremely popular cycle, which can be found in nearly every book of hours, is the Office of the Dead. The Office of the Dead was recited when someone had died. The prayers start at midnight on the eve of the funeral. Since this cycle does not contain each of the eight canonical hours, it is called an office or a vigil, rather than a cycle of hours. The Office of the Dead was recited not only at times of a funeral, it was also said throughout the year for the repose of the soul and out of concern for one's afterlife. Hence, the Office of the Dead is illuminated not only with depictions of burial rituals, but also of death as a skeleton and of pleading souls in purgatory. Daily confrontation with these sinister texts and ominous miniatures was supposed to persuade and motivate the reader to live a God-fearing and virtuous life. On top of that, Reciting the Office of the Dead enabled readers to shorten the time they might have to spend in purgatory. Apprehension over death and the afterlife is also manifested by the popularity of the penitential psalms. The seven penitential psalms were read in order to show remorse and to atone for former sinning. The penitential psalms were often illuminated with a depiction of the Last Judgment showing Christ enthroned in glory, judging souls who are rising from the grave. Alternatively, the penitential psalms showed a depiction of King David begging God for forgiveness for his sins. In the Middle Ages, David was considered to be the author of the psalms. The penitential psalms were mostly followed by the litany, in which God is begged for help and clemency. After this, Mary, the angels, the apostles and the saints are beseeched one by one to intervene with God on behalf of the reader. Besides the cycles of hours, the penitential psalms and the litany, most books of hours also contain some simple prayers. Some of these prayers were read in order to obtain an indulgence. 
Others protected the reader from disasters and diseases, such as the plague, or from ailments and predicaments, such as toothaches or fleas. Some books of ours contain short excerpts from the New Testament, such as this passage from the Gospel according to John about the Passion of Christ. Books of ours were sometimes customized with heraldic designs and mottos, and with depictions of the commissioners. The design of this border in a late medieval manuscript, for instance, refers to the coat of arms of the commissioners, the Brugian family Metherneia. Precious books of ours were handed down from generation to generation. Some owners even recorded a family chronicle in these manuscripts. On the end leaf of manuscript 329, for instance, a 16th century owner marks the dates of his or her children's births and of marriages and of deaths within the family. Books of ours are important witnesses to the social, artistic and devout life in the late Middle Ages. They were treasured as conveyors of prestige, as sources of artistic pleasure and as allies in the daily pursuit of salvation of the soul. Still